This is episode 34 of Hoops Forum, a production of Radius Athletics and a Quick Timeout podcast. Uh, he's Randy Sherman, and even though he's Radius Athletics, he is sporting the new a Quick Timeout podcast T-shirt. Absolutely, I, I am Tony Miller of a Quick Timeout of a Quick Timeout podcast. We are going to talk today, building on last week's show, playing without play calls, to talk specific actions and concepts to use with your team. With the example of Princeton offense, and a lot of you out there are Princeton fans from some of the feedback that we're getting. So we're going to show you some of those concepts and actions today. Before we get going, a big thanks to our sponsors at 323 Sports. Basketball season just around the corner today. Randy is our first day of practice. I'm All right. up at 6 a.m. Well, I was up earlier than that, but 6 a.m. practice this morning. So if I have any uh, hiccups, you know. The reason behind that but if you your school's in need of basketball scorebooks anything really for the basketball season 323 sports can get you off to a good start to find out more about what they can do for your program visit 323sports.com or you can contact a rep at sales at 323sports.com they'll be sure to do it right for your sports program so i mentioned at the beginning that this is building off last week's episode right. ready for those who weren't here or haven't listened or haven't watched yet the topic of playing without calls, uh, maybe refresh that and then we'll skip r or we'll jump right into our Princeton sure. stuff. Yeah. So the idea of playing without calls would be like if, if there's a live ball change of possession, like we get a defensive rebound or we get scored upon, we just immediately like, like the coach from the sideline just doesn't interrupt the action and, and the players know, Hey, flow to these spots or sprint to these spots. And, and, whatever sort of happens first with the ball, just sort of, we just follow that, that and let the ball call the play and play from there. Um, you know, you could do that with a lot of offenses and a lot of styles of play. You could just run to these spots and, and get right into your motion. You could just run to these spots, get right into your drag screen action or what secondary break without needing the coach to call it, just react to where the, the pass goes or the first, uh, you know, handoff or whatever starts possession. We're using Princeton today because, you know, Princeton's made up of some different phases, point, low post, et cetera, that, um, that, you know, there's, again, providing this as an example without fixating so much on, hey, you should be running Princeton, but more of like, this is how you could do it with this particular offense where there are different phases, different um, plays, if you will, low post, point, et cetera. But the coach doesn't have to call it from the sideline. The players just get to that Princeton base shape, and then the ball where it goes first sort of dictates where the possession leads. So it's like follow, the, you know, follow the possession wherever it leads us. Is kind of what we're what we're talking about. I'd encourage anyone who isn't a Princeton coach to stick with this. As Randy mentioned, the concepts and actions can really be implemented by anybody, especially for those that are running any kind of conceptual offense. Even if you're not, yeah. it'd be something a quick hitter. I posted this last week, a video. I didn't use the Princeton terms in my tweet, and I had a bunch of people getting after me. Oh, that's a Princeton series. It is, but you don't have to run Princeton. You can just teach your players to play out of concepts and yeah. do what was in within the video. Speaking of video, what you see on the screen, those of you that are watching, we have video clips as well as a presentation. The presentation is one that Randy has put together recently, and we'll point you towards that at the end mm -hmm. where you can get a hold of that. Um, those of you that are listening, I would encourage you to go back and watch this either on the Radius Athletics YouTube page or here on Twitter. You can go back and watch the full episodes on Randy and my pages, but several helpful clips and we'll talk through each of these. So the video is here up on the screen. Let me first uh, start instead with the breakdown of the diagram because it will probably make things a little bit more um, clear when it comes to the videos that we watch. So this first action here, the pitch ahead, Randy, talk them through this diagram, and then we'll show them the video that goes along with it. Yeah, so what you're going to see is the diagram come to life in the video, basically. Um, the And this, again, letting the ball come to place, or call to play. You see the five players transitioning to that base Princeton shape where you've got you know two forwards, two guard front, and the low post. Um, but, you know, as one is advancing the ball, maybe they got a, you know, four got a defensive rebound outletted to one or we got scored on four was my inbounder. One is bringing the ball. They're looking ahead. And if they throw ahead to the wing, that sort of like sends up the 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 um, signal, if you will, that we're in the low post phase of Princeton offense where we don't need to call it like I don't need to say, hey, run low post. The, the ball hits the wing. We're in that based on the shape. So. 
you'll see one uh, when they pass ahead to the wing, cut away to the far corner, like it's drawn, like it's drawn there. And then eventually um, they'll get to this shape where the ball's on the wing. There's a low post and then there's corner wing and point filled and you're in low post shape. Yeah, so here's the Stanford women and you're going to see that like where there's the throw ahead to the wing. Uh, this young lady's going to cut through to the far corner. You're going to see the post uh, player running down the opposite lane line and then, and then cutting in toward the um, ball side block. And um, the three players, Stanford does, Stanford women here doing this, uh, they do something a little different than what I had diagrammed. The trailer interchanges with this wing, but you'll see in a moment when they get the ball, the, it'll, it'll all sort itself out and you'll see wing, post, and, the, and a player at corner, wing, and top. And, and um, you know, the first objective here is to go, go from one, pitching ahead to the, the ball side wing, we'll call her two. And then right into five on the low post, and we get a paint touch within, you know, four or five seconds here in in on the break. I like the amount of space that it also creates on the strong side of the floor. You could do more. It's like it. a two man game on this uh, over here, mm -hmm. but but you'll see here in a moment once they sort of run this interchange, the the the, uh, the player coming to the top of the circle here, um, and they're going to get that you know that shape that was in the diagram we just showed. I would but guess I think in these first clips we'll go we'll go right inside to the post and and show that like you know that's what that's our primary objective to go get the ball ahead quickly and and enter it right into the post and put pressure on the rim early in the possession. So right there you see there's the shape. Wing, post, corner, wing, top of circle. I would guess the interchange on the other side kind of keeps the help defenders occupied so you yeah. can uh yeah, and, it, and also for Stanford in particular, because I know this team pretty well, it brings it brings one of their best players, their best guard, right up here to the top of circle. So if we do transition from low to point, she's going to be in the point action. Hmm. But yeah, you're right. That moves that girl behind. That might be behind that behind the lob or uh, helping support the post defender or the help side. You know, um, it moves her to where if we do feed it in the post, it's probably going to be one v one. Yeah, good deal. You want to show another one of these clips or move on to the next yeah player? let him play a little can, can you play him a little faster or is it is it is it doing that slow-mo like that i'm not sure why it's showing it at this speed here huh. i think it's doing this kind of on its own here okay yeah go back to the diagrams oh yeah here's here we go this oh, this looks like I'm it's sorry. going good now um, here we go i think it's going a little bit faster yeah so same thing here from stanford again low post they threw ahead to the wing and now we're transitioning to another shape. When the wing passes it to the top, we're going right into point series again. Coach doesn't call, hey, go low post the point. It just you're just reacting to where the ball goes and what happens next. So the, here they go from low post. The wing didn't feed the post. She threw it back to the girl at the point. That signifies point. The post rose to the elbow. They play to the elbow, and now they go right into point over the top. Hmm. No calls. That's just great. just reacting. I don't know why it's playing in that slow motion, but uh, yeah, we'll try to speed it up here in a second. Uh, let me go ahead and pause this. We'll go back. We'll come back to this as well. Let me go back to the diagrams for sure. everybody. Yeah, so we saw that pitch ahead right into low post, um, dribble push. I might have a couple clips in there. Um, I, I think I do. Um, I'm not sure what's exactly next on the on the video. But, uh, yeah, so looks like here we're going brush cut into point or wave into point where the guy cutting through, you see him right at the Atlantic 10 logo, he's cutting through in front of the post. Um, the, the player with the ball centering with his dribble and pause it right about now. We're in point, we're in point shape. We've got, we've got the player, the ball at the top of circle, post at the elbow, um, and um, corners and, and one wing field and we're right into we're right into point shape and once the ball's entered to the elbow the player who passed it can go over and screen for the man in the corner they can go away screen for the wing they can cut middle um again no calls just just reacting to what happens first in the possession yeah good deal all right let me go back to the diagrams here while you explain this next one let me pull up uh, a different different file here and hopefully that we'll be able to see the videos a little bit better okay 
Yeah, so this, what you're seeing on the screen right now would be, you know, there's only so many things as we enter the front court that can happen first. The player bringing the ball might throw it ahead to the wing. Well, that, in Princeton, that signifies low post. They might, uh, we might wave a guy through like we saw that. That would sort of signal we're waving right into point. Here we're making, in this diagram, we're making a guard-to-guard -guard pass. A guard-to-guard -guard pass, the player who makes the guard-to-guard -guard pass is going to brush cut down the lane line and, and in, front of, in front of the center. Two will dribble center it, and we're right into point. So, um, again, we're just reacting to what the ball does first, if you will, and 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 getting into that that phase of Princeton offense based on that, not what the coach calls from the sideline. And we can we can enter into that um, we can enter into that phase again. Our our topic from last week that we're carrying over to this week is playing without play calls. And, you know, no one said we're throwing, hey, I want you to run. I, th I want you to throw guard to guard and get into point. It just just the decision that was made and you're reacting to your teammates. You're reacting to the ball and letting that first uh, distribution of the pass um, call the play. All right. Is this the forwards at out? Yeah, forwards out would be um, would be um, signaled by handoff. You see that one okay? Yeah. That looks good. See if you can go back to some of those earlier ones, like like drag it back. Sure. Yeah, so um, let's see. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of wave to point where the where the 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 ball's being brought up the court by one guard, the opposite guard. We don't make a guard to guard pass. He instead cuts through right there and and we drop it into the elbow. So that that when they did make a guard to guard pass and get right into point. I think the next ones will be just wave. See the player cutting through right into point. Um, there is no guard to guard pass. The the off guard, the the guard without the ball, he brush cuts down and out to in front of the post to uh, there he goes right there and we go right into point away. Curl for a layup. So there's the wave, no call, right into point, screen away, curl, play to the pop man, chase your pass, right into middle ball screen. There's wave, point, okay, freeze it. That's that's a, this is another option, okay? So you saw in those other clips, this is sort of, I think, like the clip you shared where there's that dribble spin. Mm -hmm. But again, in Princeton, this isn't a call. It's a reaction to just take – let the possession take you where it wants to take you, right? So they were going wave to point. The guy was dribbling his – or centering his dribble with his inside hand. He wants to enter the elbow, but he got to the midline and didn't like the entry, like felt like it was denied. Uh, you know, they're playing Rhode Island when uh, Hurley was their coach, and they use a lot of denial. So the the player – the he, he, he got to the midline, didn't like that elbow entry, and he, and he spun and that, that reverse, that's why they call this spin. So um, that reverse pivot sort of like moved us. We're not entering to the elbow. I'm dribbling at this player. He's going to cut through into a post up. He back cut into a post up. So here's wave to point over. Reject. Hit the reject man for a layup. Yeah. So before we watch any more clips, yeah. I hear at the beginning of the year and the questions that I get, um, there seems to be almost like two mindsets. And I know probably most that are listening to us have been around and have heard you talk about this before. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I will have coaches that come to me and say, what do you guys do? And I feel like they want a list of almost like plays. But the ones that understand know the concepts, you can really pick up whatever concept you want, I, I, you know, if we're going to be a Princeton team, a coach will sometimes come to me and feel like they need to know every single thing that Princeton does in order to run their offense. You might uh, eventually, but you you can you can pretty quickly just get enough to get started. And so the the concepts you could list out the concepts and say we want to do these five things. Yeah. Um, for and the a, way I outline it, not to interrupt, but the way I would outline it would be we need. A, a, a phase, if you will, for based on the, the short list of things that the ball might do first in the possession. I want my guys or girls to know when we hit the wing with that pitch ahead, we're right into this. 
When we throw guard to guard, we're right into that. When we dribble push, we're right into this. When we when we wave the guy through, we're right into that. Um, I've, uh, when we dribble handoff, which you're going to see when we get to forwards out, like when we dribble handoff with the player below us, that we get to you know some. It's like there's a lot of information in the basketball universe, but like there's only like about three or four things that can happen first in a possession. Like I throw it ahead, I throw it across, I dribble. I dribble handoff with a guy below me. Like I, I, I keep it and get a ball screen set for me. Like there's, and that way of thinking is how you can outline the game in your head. And we talked about outlining the game last week. Like what do we run when the ball goes here, 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 or here? I know that may not sound very impressive, but what you just explained can go a long way in teaching somebody who has not necessarily coached in concepts to start teaching in concepts. I, I think they, yeah. again, most people want to memorize a play. But if you're going to actually coach in concepts, because once you start teaching, a, a, you, when you communicate it to your team, as in you do this every time, they just look to run the play. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's not you're not actually playing out of concept. So like yeah. here are our five concepts. You introduce those, what they should look like. Then you run into a small sided game and mm -hmm. then you build out to your five on five and they read the defense. And because the question I get is, well, how do I know when I reject it? And then how do I know when we actually curl it? And do I call it each time? No, that's then that's not playing without that's playing with play calls. That's not playing without play calls. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you present like, like, okay, let's say we go wave into point, we hit the elbow and the guy uh, who enters the elbow, um, he may read the defense to, to tell him what to do next. Like what should he screen away? Should he cut over? He could do that based on the position of his on-ball defender. So you could, if you wanted to get in that level of detail of like, let the defense, you know, don't fight the defense. So if I enter that elbow and the guy's kind of jumps to the ball and, and is key, is is keeping me from say cutting over the top of that elbow, well, why would I burrow through him and fight him and and go ahead and run over? I could just go screen away or cut middle, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, uh, but again that that's that's an autonomous decision by the player on the court <laughs> yeah based yeah. on their cues and and what they're seeing and what they're what they're uh what they're what feels natural and then then the other four players on his or her team just like knows okay they they enter the elbow they screen away that we know that we got right into point away mm -hmm. All right, here's the one that you were explaining so they can actually see it in the diagram. I know some like to watch it with the video, but others like to see the breakdown of it. Uh, but this is your wave point. Yeah, so so what happens here is the player advancing the ball. Uh, they might even, you'll see in some of the clips, the guy bringing the ball with his right hand, you know, before they cross half court, will use his left hand and just give the guy a little, little wave, like, hey, man, go on through. Like, just wave him through. And he cuts down the lane line in front of the post, and there's a little bit of interference here, so... When I do cross over and center with the dribble with my inside hand, I can I can dump it right into the, the post at the elbow. Mm -hmm. All right, let me pull up for people the video so they can see what that looks like as well. Yeah, there's that that's that's a pretty common um, entry here, and you you'll see Nebraska Wesleyan here. He just gave him a little wave, like he just is told to go on through, and they go right into wave point screen away. That one's one that you can signal. I mean, obviously, wave. You are waving him through. So yeah, but the, but the player, the player with the balls, kind of just like calling the action, like mm -hmm. like you go on and go through. Like you saw it there with San Francisco, wave. Um, That's um, just you know, shake action. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right there on the they get to they get to the middle ball screen and throw it to the back action. Yep. Right forwards out would be when we we get into a handoff. Um, th there might be a couple more clips, so just let it keep playing. Uh, yeah, so see, they hand off with the player below us. So there's another thing that can happen first. So they hand off and just flip the forwards to the top spots, throw a guard to guard pass. And again, what is guard to guard pass signal? Guard to guard pass signals point. So they're going to go forwards out. They make the guard to guard pass out of forwards out. He cuts down and out, and they go right into uh, go right into point. Yeah, here's Princeton women doing it. Forwards out, guard to guard pass, cuts over the post, point, screen away, pop back, middle ball screen, hesitate and go, shoulder shoulder on chest, lay up. Yeah, just no calls, just follow the, let the possession takes you where it wants to take you. Forwards out, I like how she shows her hand there. 
cuts over the post, point, screen away, pop back, pop, hits the pop back for a shot. Hmm. Here's Richmond, forwards out. They're going to go dribble handoff, guard to guard pass, cut over the post, right into point, point over. Into into down screen handoff like Chicago action, right? Right mm -hmm. there. Really nice. Yeah. Okay. Let's wait on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Find the diagrams for open. I'm pretty sure they're in the in the diagrams. Um, open is this another phase of the Princeton offense? That's the uh, you'll hear it called open or one two two in Princeton nomenclature. Um, but it's it's simply five out. <laughs> it's when we're five out. And all, a lot of times you'll see Richmond do this in a lot of the clips. It'll be when their five man, their center gets a defensive rebound and, and the other players release to run to their spots, if you will. And the five man is, is not, he's not out on a rim run because he got the rebound. He's sort of naturally trailing the play, right? Like, so we're, it wouldn't make sense necessarily for him to rebound and then get ahead on the rim run because he's already just naturally trailing the play and we can we can reverse our offense through him or play to them in the middle of the floor and um that's what you'll see in uh, in these clips i think they're mostly richmond um they have a, a typically have you know good skilled big man who they who they will play through at the top of the circle quite a lot so here they're on defense and you'll see the guy with a headband right here get the defensive rebound and outlet and now you see their transition break, and he's in a natural trail, and they play play to him, and then he gets right into a dribble at, which is a, a you know open phase of the Princeton offense. So he dribbles at, and you're going to see him just dropping dimes like uh, <laughs> backdoor dribble ats on the dribble at. You know, uh, you're you're freezing your man. Uh, he's dribbling at his his teammate's defender, not his teammate. We want the defender to wait for a second to, to, to really make the guy decide if am I going to help on the dribble or am I going to stare at the ball? And then you back up behind them and they just deliver these some really smooth one hand passes off the dribble. Um, and if he's low like that, you can come over the top for the pitch and pop like that. Hmm. Yeah, cool. So so again. That's another example of like Chris Mooney, the Richmond coach, isn't going, hey, open, open, open when they got the rebound. It's just it's. He got the rebound. He outletted. He's in a natural trail. Everyone else is running to guard to forward spots. Instead of our guy rim running down the middle, he's trailing. He's going to stop at top of key, and we just end up in open without having to joystick at all. It just it just materializes <laughs> all right. organically, so, right? So whether or not somebody wants to use this or another type of conceptual offense, sure. where would you say that they should start – and how should they be realistic about where they should get understanding that it's October 15th, the day of this recording, mm -hmm. and probably the season is not too long away. Um, what should they expect maybe this year or this semester? Yeah. And uh, just being realistic about actually building this into their offensive system. That's a great question. I would say, let's say, let's just put Princeton aside for a moment and just say you're a, a, a four out dribble drive team or a four out uh, motion type team what where i where i would start would be with transition offense to where where our players when we get when we secure the ball back via defensive rebounder will get scored upon at in that moment we we know we run right to these spots we're going to fill corner corner top top and post or something like that if we're a four out motion team or if, uh, we're going to fill corner corner top top and backside dunker if we're a, a, a dribble drive four out type team and we just i began with the instilling the habit of our team of we just got the ball back defensive rebound we just got scored on we're inbounding get there and and um get to those spots and then show the team that like that like hey because this is the way I'm teaching you transition offense to get to these spots, I don't need to call our offense for you. Like, like you're running right into the offense. You run right into that shape that we begin with. Uh, what I tried to do with my teams is like, I would teach our primary break. And then I would, in the same practice, I'd be doing some half court breakdown drills. If we're say, hypothetically say we're dribble drive, I'm working on our drive and kick stuff and, and, and our passing and cutting out of our four out shape. And, 
And, you know, I'm doing that within the same first few practices. And then there's going to be a day, a few days ahead from now where I'm able to show them like we've been working on primary break in the full court where we just throw in a head hit in the five man. We're just, you know, uh, and then I'll be able to show them in a few days, uh, maybe even a day or two or even in one practice of like, hey, check it out. If all the primary break stuff, if, if it doesn't present an opportunity, those two paths I've been teaching, transition offense and half court offense can just converge together. We can just go right into it. It's like, hey, if we throw it down and, and cut through and square the top and come back up and there's nothing there, what are we in? Oh, we're in our offense. Uh, that's where I would start. Just simple. Can we hit those four or five spots of our offensive shape consistently? in our sleep, like we get a rebound, we run to those spots and, and we rarely mess that up. And we begin with that shape. Uh, that's where I would start. I would say, you know, I always had the goal of, of, you know, by our first game to be able to do at least that with our base offense, just get to those four or five spots and be able to go right into our base offense, right off the, right off the break with no call needed in those live ball situations for some teams that may happen very quickly for some teams who maybe have played in a more controlled call a play, just walk the ball up and it might be a box one time, a horns another time, a, a you know, a, a, a floppy another time or something like that. Uh, and you're moving toward more of like, okay, just find that, that sounds easy, but it might take you a little longer for your team to sort of build that habit of consistently getting to those spots. So, um, your your mileage may vary as far as how long that that might take to get to where you seamlessly flow into your offense. Now, if you have secondary break options that you want to be triggered by different passes, almost like how we saw Princeton being triggered, those different phases being tri triggered by different passes, I would begin with one option for each of those openings. We hit the wing. We hit the trail. We hand off to the guy below us like one opening for each one of those openings to where we know when this happens, we, we get to that without even having to call a thing. Yeah, I mean, that's from talking to you. That's the biggest if takeaway coaches that you're wanting to implement this that I've learned from from Randy and, and thought more about this year. How can we as quickly as possible transition from our transition to our half court offense mm -hmm. um, or maybe even score out of transition? Sure. But to use that by number one is your alignment and your alignment isn't spacing. Your alignment creates space. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we're all trying to do is how can we create space to create an advantage for our offense? These are all terms where we have whole shows dedicated to this. So I'd encourage you to go back and, and listen to those individually if you want some ideas for how to go about doing each of those that I just said. And then the goal of the game is to score the ball. How can we do that? That may be just that may happen within the first five seconds. That yeah. may happen after four or five. You know, the the dominoes fall or the concepts concept here, back cut, score fake a screen, go and seal a guy in the post, play out of the post. That can look like a lot of different things. And I think that's where it becomes personnel driven and then also personal preference of what concepts you want your team to to really emphasize and then just drill those concepts over and over and over uh, through those small side of games and five on five and that sort of thing. Yeah, the big takeaway I would offer to coaches, you know, without fixating on Princeton or dribble drive motion, things we talked about today, would be whatever offense that you run, look at its shape when you set it up and, and, and then just kind of begin a design challenge in your head of like, how can we run straight to that get right into it without me being necessary from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And for the next coach who next is thinking, all right, what concepts should I use? Randy's got a lot of suggestions for you. And Randy, can you please talk to us about your ramp program? I can. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a program I've done, but this will be the seventh season of ramp um, where it's a membership program for coaches where I basically serve as a sounding board, film watching partner. Um, but really more than that, and more importantly than that is it created a community of, of coaches who are also sort of trying their best to play this way. And, and, and you, you can learn, from their experience and share ideas alongside them and me and get, get feedback from both of us. So um, yeah, that's, that's it. You know, just reach out to me if you're interested, but um, 
And this, 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 this is a way that like a lot of the coaches I'm working with are trying to move towards. And like you said, it sounds simple. Like just, Hey, just run to these spots and let the ball call the play. Yeah. That sounds sim simple, but um, it, it, it definitely is not without some growing pains. So ramp is just some, some help through those growing pains. <laughs> it has been a three year process for me and it would have been accelerated if I had talked to Randy earlier. So, take up his offer this presentation by the way was also one of those things that are available to his ramp members so these yeah. are the things that he is producing throughout the year that would be a great asset great resource and i again say not just for your self personally but also for your team these are some great clips he's done all the work for you and you can show these to your players and give them some ideas of what it should look like without having to again go through the growing pain of sometimes getting it right having it on film going back and showing your players they can get an idea right from the start about exactly what it what it's supposed to look like here so and great you stuff mentioned something too that i i try to do when i you know help coaches is like give them enough to get started like you 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 I, th I think that's the best thing you said today was was you got enough to get started you know worry about the minor edge case details when we cross that bridge but right now can your team run to those spots get into a get into an option right off the break without you calling it and check back with me when we can do that and we'll color in some details but until then you got plenty to work on yeah Great suggestions to start off your season. Don't try to accomplish it all in the first month, but at least get started. And Randy is here to help you with that. Before we wrap things up, if you're wanting to increase your school's revenue or just improve the fan experience, look at sidelineinteractive.com. Their scoreboards and displays are great for improving the look of your gym and can help you with that revenue piece. To find out more, visit sidelineinteractive.com. Appreciate all of you who joined us this week. If you missed any part of the live show, you can go back and watch those on the Radius Athletics YouTube page. Or if you want to just listen to the audio, search a quick timeout podcast. You'll find the full version there in audio format. Thanks for tuning in to Hoops Forum. For Randy Sherman, I'm Tony Miller. We'll talk to you again next week.